All right. All right. Hey, I want to thank everybody for showing up for Friday's big fundraiser for Maybe a Girl. Thank you. We had a nice turnout and we raised some money. Thank you, Howie Klein. Every Friday night, we're going to be doing either fundraisers or lectures at office hours. Go to my website for a link. I'm David Feldman. David Feldman has the night off. And this is the mop up for March 26, 2023. I'm taking the night. I'm tired. I don't feel like doing anything tonight, right? Go watch uh, my uh, 20th anniversary of Iraq. I thought that, that took a lot out of me. All right. This is the news. As Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg prepares his hush money indictment, former President Donald Trump spent most of Friday at Mar-a-Lago feverishly practic practicing his perp walk. <laughs> That's Trump practicing his perp walk. He wants to look good. Trump on Friday took to social media and complained that only 10% of the people living in Manhattan voted for Bragg which is still 10% more than the people living in Manhattan who voted for Trump. Trump warned that if the Manhattan DA puts him in jail, there will be, quote, death and destruction. Yeah, of Trump's butt. <laughs> I'm taking the night off. Uh, you know, oftentimes white people, white people, oftentimes white people sent to prison run the risk of being forced to join a white extremist Nazi gang. Luckily, Trump doesn't have to worry about that since he's already a Republican. Since there was no arrest this week, Trump was able to appear at his big rally in Waco, Texas, Saturday night. Here we see MAGA supporters in Waco lining up early Friday morning just to get a good seat from uh, for Trump's big speech. They're, they're just look at all those Trump supporters <laughs> lining up to, to see to see him. Wanting wanting to savor his 15 minutes of fame, Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg walks the more fashionable streets of New York City's Upper East Side, approaching attractive women with, hi, I'm Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg, and right here in my breast pocket is an Alvin indictment for you to meet me for drinks at the Carlisle in 15 minutes. He carries an Alvin indictment to pick up women. Clearly unnerved by indictments pending in Manhattan, Georgia, and Washington, D.C., Donald Trump kept interrupting his speech in Davenport, Iowa, by pointing to members of the crowd and shouting, are you a process server? How about you? Are you a process server? How about you? No, no, the ugly one. No, no, the other ugly one. Are you a process server? No, not you, the ugly one sitting next to the fat one. No, not the fat one. Okay, you see that row of disgusting pigs? No, not that row of disgusting, morbidly obese pigs. Okay, you see that row of horse-faced dogs behind the row of saggy old people in front of the row of flatulent, greasy, toothless cretins. Are you a pros... Forget it. Arriving at the second floor to step out, Senator Elizabeth Warren was ambushed by reporters demanding her response to Senator Lindsey Graham's allegation that she was the one who just passed wind in the elevator. As usual, Fed Chair Jer Jerome Powell can't remember if raising interest rates is good for inflation and bad for unemployment or good for unemployment and bad for inflation. After announcing his ninth interest rate increase in a row, Fed Chair Jerome Powell slinked out in shame after his press conference turned hostile when he began reading the first three chapters of Indigo Kiss, a 19th century romance novel he's working on that takes place in the antebellum South. Oof. 
because I'm taking the night off because he's an 80 year old white man. Joe Biden is of the generation where he thinks it's still OK to snap your fingers to get the busboy's attention at the Olive Garden. One of the many downsides to being Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is right after your die-hard illiterate voters buy your new book, they wave it in your face, demanding to know what it says. Arriving at the podium, Ron DeSantis had absolutely nothing to say after realizing instead of Toni Morrison's beloved, he accidentally banned his own speech. Yeah, that's tough when you, when you ban your own speech. And so Ron DeSantis was forced to launch into his old standby and perform an overtly racist, homophobic, and misogynistic version of Bob Newhart's famous phone call to God bit. There are some who think French President Emmanuel Macron picked the wrong week to host his own gender reveal party. Washington insiders are now saying South Carolina Republican Senator Tim Scott thinks he can win the GOP nomination for president with one simple message. A vote for me proves you're not a racist. Hmm. Because he hasn't bathed since Jacques Chirac was president, Gaston was allowed to march with the other French protesters only after he promised to keep a fully lit, jumbo-sized stick of insect repellent beside him at all times. <laughs> because the French are better than we are in every way, Americans would be surprised to know this is what French labor activists call a light turnout. This is a light turnout in France for a protest. Well, with French garbage men on strike, word on the street is Parisian rodents. Parisian rats and rodents are now referring to March of 2023 as Les Belles Epoques. Les Belles Epoques. Let's go full screen on this one. Even though it's been two weeks Australian director Baz Luhrmann's face is still celebrating its Oscar win for best special effects. Congratulations, Baz Luhrmann's face. Actor Gwyneth Paltrow is being sued by a 76-year-old optometrist over who's to blame for a ski collision that took place on the bunny slope of a Park City, Utah ski resort. During testimony this week, Paltrow told jurors, who are you going to believe? Some eye doctor who nobody ever heard of? Or the woman who's made millions telling women to steam clean their vaginas before shoving a hornet's nest up there? I'm going to believe the woman who's made millions telling women to steam clean their vaginas before shoving a hornet's nest up there. Gwyneth Paltrow, and I wish I were making this up, Gwyneth Paltrow is now recommending rectal ozone therapy, rectal ozone therapy, which might explain why her company is named Goop. Paltrow appearing, again, I wish I was making this up, Paltrow appearing on a wellness podcast this week said she's never felt better ever since she began shooting ozone into her rectum. You know, in a few short years, we've gone from worrying about a hole in the ozone to worrying about ozone in the hole. Practitioners of alternative medicine call this rectal insufflation, while others call it a relatively plausible excuse for sticking things up your ass. You know what would make the rest of us feel a whole lot better, Gwyneth? Putting a cork in your mouth. Have you tried that? Have you tried putting a cork in your mouth? During this week's visit to Kiev, Prince William negotiated with the Ukrainian soldier seen on the left to get the Ukrainian soldier seen here on the right to admit he stole the hat he's wearing from King Charles's wife, Camilla, 
at Queen Elizabeth's funeral. Yeah, that is, that's the kind of hat Camilla would wear at a funeral or ascot, I believe. Well, later that day in Ukraine, William met with President Zelensky and a team of generals for a strategy session on how best to neutralize a certain American sister-in-law. Hmm. In Moscow on Tuesday, meeting with Vladimir Putin, President Xi Jinping excuses himself, saying he must go to the bathroom and do number five, which is code for beef and broccoli. This portion of the David Feldman Show is brought to you by George Soros, bringing you one world global government and FEMA death camps since 2005. Well, because it's all about egalitarian awareness, French riots always offer a choice between smoking and non-smoking. Yes, we must be egalitarian. This is the view of Joe Biden attending a congressional luncheon, looking through Marjorie Taylor Greene's right ear and straight out through her left. If you were going to look at Joe Biden uh, attending this week's congressional luncheon, and you, this would, this is the view. This picture was taken uh, going through Marjorie Taylor Greene's right ear and straight out through her left because there's nothing there. Well, once the world's most difficult and prestigious, the Tour de France this month became the stinkiest. Yeah, that's got to be tough, right? Poor guy. A coward like his father before him and his father before him and his father before him, during riots, French gendarme Michel, French gendarme Michel, always stands behind his idiot, his idiot friend, Marcel the Human Shield Balzac, and says, move forward. I got your back. No, go, go forward. Don't worry. I, I'm right behind you. Just move forward. Just rocks and bullets. Keep, keep moving forward. Receiving the much-coveted three stars from Michelin, executive chef Fateh Fateh 2 by 4 executive chef Fateh Fateh 2 by 4 his new restaurant, Street, is single-handedly responsible for the rise in popularity of garbage bag to table French cuisine. It's quite delicious. Garbage bag to table French cuisine. It all started at the restaurant in Paris named Street. Executive chef Faté Faté <laughs> two, by, two by four. I'm taking the night off. After defacing the French presidential palace this week to protest Emmanuel Macron's decision raising the retirement age to 64, famed graffiti artist Jacques Saint Pollock tells protesters his message is only for people who are not too stupid to understand it. Some tickets to see Bruce Springsteen in Buffalo are now selling for $5,000 a piece. A working class hero, the boss, says he wishes he could charge five grand a piece for every ticket, but the $5,000 tickets are reserved solely for fans who are financially strapped. The rest of you have to f pay full price. Only the... Uh, only the fans of Bruce Springsteen who are financially strapped uh, get the, the cheaper seats at $5,000 a piece. Because he knows she hates him to the core of her very being, Donald Trump only fakes sip glasses of water handed to him by his wife, Melania. White House insiders say Joe Biden is remaining silent on Donald Trump's legal problems, partly because he doesn't want to influence the criminal prosecutions, but mostly because Biden can't remember who Donald Trump is. The, uh, the Senate confirmed Daniel Werfel 
to be the new commissioner of the Internal Revenue Service in a vote 54 to 42, winning the support of six Republicans when, under oath, he demonstrated how, as IRS commissioner, he would personally audit Megan the Stallion's ass. Wow. That's, that's how you get the Republican vote, I guess. While angry protests continue to mount on the streets of Paris with garbage cans and eggs tossed at gendarmes trying to maintain order, the French police union is now insisting President Emmanuel Macron lower their retirement age to 25. To mark the 20th anniversary of America's illegal invasion of Iraq, George W. Bush decided the best way to honor the soldiers he sent into harm's way would be by getting the old war cabinet back together again and try and solve the series finale for ABC's The Goldbergs. Isn't that sweet? That's the best way to honor the troops he sent into harm's way, trying to solve the series finale for ABC's The Goldbergs. The War Cabinet. Well, because he's 80, Joe Biden must be reminded that what he thinks is a shiny, bright light summoning him over to the other side is in fact his son Hunter in the Rose Garden smoking crack. Wrapping up their big Moscow meeting, Presidents Xi and Putin presented each other with memory albums featuring their favorite moments from the summit, including photographs, handwritten notes to each other, crushed flowers from the dinner banquet, and pressed human toes. You can always tell Donald Trump is thinking about his daughter Ivanka by the way he absentmindedly starts making the jerking off motion with his right hand. With pressure from the Manhattan DA mounting, much of Donald Trump's speech in New Hampshire this week was basically him sizing up each individual member of the crowd. Sizing up each individual... <laughs> Sorry. With pressure from the Manhattan DA mounting, much of Donald Trump's speech in New Hampshire this week was basically him sizing up each individual member of the crowd to decide whether he needs to make a run for it. I think he's nervous. Instead of prescribing Prilosec, Ron DeSantis's gastroenterologist tells the Florida governor, acid reflux is best treated by not listening to any speeches delivered by Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Jeff Bezos' girlfriend always has plump lips because Jeff Bezos can only get off. He can only get off by watching as she repeatedly sticks her face inside a hornet's nest while screaming in agony. Well, some public speakers, when they get nervous, like to imagine the audience completely naked. Ron DeSantis, however, prefers imagining he's sneaking up behind the audience and removing its bra strap without consent. <laughs> it's not nice. Watching footmen scurry about, satisfying his every desire. At age 74, King Charles III can't help but imagine how much better life would have turned out for him had his dear mama dropped dead 50 years ago. Meanwhile, Charles announced he was postponing a planned visit to France due to the ongoing protests. King Charles was hoping for a quick meeting with President Emmanuel Macron, and then he planned to drop by the Parisian Tunnel, made famous by Dodi and Diana, or Camilla, and he liked to fornicate. During an official state visit to Canada, Joe Biden and wife Jill asked Prime Minister Trudeau, for the name of that guy who can hook them up with some inexpensive Vicodin 
and Cialis. Because Senate Banking Committee Chairman Sherrod Brown suffers from extreme mental illness, last week's hearings would not come to order until Fed Chair Jerome Powell showed proof of a fully picked nose. Russian President Vladimir Putin announced today that he struck a deal with Belarusian leader Alexander Lugashenko in which Russia would agree to deploy tactical nuclear weapons inside the Belarusian borders if Lukashenko would agree to stand seven inches shorter. A high school principal in Florida was fired after parents complained six graders were shown a picture of Michelangelo's David. Parents weren't upset by David's junk. Instead, the Florida parents were horrified that David is depicted holding a slingshot instead of an assault rifle. And that would upset the people of Florida. Gordon Moore, the philanthropist and founder of computer chip giant Intel, passed away this week at the age of 94, and I believe we have an exclusive photo of his coffin. Yes, uh, you know it's uh, Gordon Moore's coffin, because uh, right there it says Intel inside. I've been David Feldman taking the night off. I'm not in the mood to do anything tonight. Uh, please like this video. It was kind of lazy, but fun Saturday night. And what else do you need to do? Subscribe to this channel. Like and subscribe to this channel, please. It helps. Makes me happy. And most importantly, leave a comment in the comment section down below. My regular listeners know that my show is shaped by your comments. I read them. And the only reason you're listening to this show right now or watching this show is because a friend of yours had the, the wherewithal to copy and paste the link to, this, to an episode and either share it via email or on social media. If you want to help me, if you want to thank me for this show, the best way to thank me is by copying and pasting this episode. I'm not sure you're going to want to with this one. I kind of took the night off tonight. Uh, but uh, if you enjoy any of my episodes, please copy and paste them and share them with your friends. Nobody is uh, promoting this for obvious reasons. And I read all your comments. You can tell that I've read your comment. There'll be a heart next to it. Thank you for your comments. Please like this. Please share this. Please subscribe to my channel. And please subscribe to my newsletter by going to davidfeldmanshow.com. My newsletter comes out every Friday, and it contains the link for office hours. We do office hours every Friday night from 8 till 9.30. I make myself available to all my listeners from 8 till 9.30, Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. And if you want to talk to me, if you want to make some suggestions, and we'll have some guests. I think the Reverend Barry W. Lynn, we're not confirmed, but I think the Reverend Barry W. Lynn will be there Friday night to launch his new book. And uh, maybe Professor Adnan Hussein will be talking with him. And I think we'll do a recording session for the podcast Friday night. So if you'd like to watch how we record the podcast, come by. Thank you for coming by Friday, uh, last Friday. We raised uh, some money for Maybe a Girl. Thank you for donating. And the people who were there and donated to Maybe a Girl, who's running for California's 30th Congressional District, they all got a Stay Strong and Protect the Weak bumper sticker. Well, they're going to get one mailed to them. It's a virtual meeting on Zoom. You should show up. Nobody's going to see you. Nobody's going to hear you. It's, you can just lurk. If you want to talk, you're welcome. If you just want to listen, you're free to do that. Is that everything? It is. Okay. Thank you for watching this. I'm David Feldman, filling in for David Feldman, reminding you to stay strong and protect 
the week.